Okay, today we're gonna to be taking a close look at the guitar style of Mike Campbell. I'm gonna be showing you a generous grab bag of his wonderful licks that are masterful in their simplicity. This is not a criticism, this is his brilliance. This is why he is the best bang for the buck guitarist. He can make a song with the simplest little lick, whether it's just an arpeggio or a short lead break he really is a brilliant composer. And if you followed his career with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers and beyond, you know this, that you wait for a certain moment in the song just to hear Mike's little guitar fill punctuate a lyric just precisely and beautifully. One other thing I'd like you to take away from this, if anything, is to check out his side project, The Blue Stingrays. This was kind of under the radar in 1997. They released just one album. It's called Surf and Burn. And it was Mike Campbell and a few of the Heartbreakers doing an instrumental surf album. Almost all originals other than Goldfinger, the Goldfinger theme, which they do brilliantly. And, and he would perform uh, with Tom Petty live back in the day. You've got to check it out. If you haven't heard it, I'm begging you. It's a Desert Island album for me. Uh, certainly my favorite instrumental guitar album of all time, Blue Stingray, Surf and Burn. Let's start with probably the easiest lick and the simplest lick, but I think it makes the whole song. It's from Here Comes My Girl. Okay, so there's this little sort of interlude part where it's an F sharp chord to an F sharp seven. And Tom says, watch your walk. And Mike goes. And he plays it three times. And it gets slightly more faded. The first one is the most accentuated because he's accentuating watch your walk. You know, you can almost picture them writing this. Tom says, okay, I'm getting, it's a tribute. He's singing, here comes my girl. And then watch her walk. And he's like, I need a lick that's gonna punctuate that. And then Mike just pulls out. <laughs> it's just brilliant, makes the whole song. So what's he doing? He's doing an F sharp seven arpeggio, hammering from open to two uh, on the second string and pulling off and then third string, third fret, fourth string, fourth fret, and then first string open, which is the E note, which is of course the seven in a F sharp seven chord. To me, when that song comes on the radio, I'm listening for that. That's what I'm listening for, is to get to that point and hear that lick, because I'm just like, boom, he just made the whole song right there. All right, so that's the first one. Simplest one, for sure. All right, let's go to Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Okay, so the main lick in that song is, or the main chord progression is E minor to G to A. So over that he plays, slides into that E note 12th fret first string, and then he plays an E minor pentatonic lick. So after you slide into that E note, you're bending the A note, full step bend, release to eighth fret, um, go back and forth a bit, and then land on that E note. Uh, ninth fret, third string. Couldn't be simpler, but that's what you remember from the song. And that, which is what he does after he plays the single note line. So he plays a single note line, E minor pentatonic line. And then he follows it with this beautiful arpeggio. What is the arpeggio? Well, we know this is an E note. We know this is a G note, the minor third in the E minor scale, and then seven, the D note. So it's an E minor seven arpeggio. Hopefully 
hopefully you're seeing a little bit of a um, pattern emergence merging here. The other beautiful thing he does with this arpeggio in that song is he not only plays it after the little lead line, but later in the song during the verses when Stevie Nicks and Tom are trading off, Stevie sings her thing and then Tom does his and in the background, Mike's playing that to punctuate Tom's verse. And it's just kind of a, a melancholy feel, right? What is Tom singing? He's singing about a woman dragging his heart around. And then Mike plays a melancholy arpeggio to punctuate it. It's genius. It's absolute genius. Okay, next let's look at Boys of Summer. If you don't know, Mike Campbell wrote the song and... Tom didn't record it, so Don Henley wrote the lyrics. Yeah. Mike has a video here on YouTube where he talks about how he wrote this song and how it was recorded. You should definitely check that out. If you play along with the uh, record, you'll have to tune down a half step. It's essentially in D sharp, but the original would have been E minor. And then the... I can see you, brown skin shining. Um, the chorus would be D to C or C add nine. And that's what's playing in the outro when Mike does. folks, right? The octave of an open. I don't know if he plays it there or if he plays it at seven and eight as the D shape. Etc. I like it best up here. And you're playing with some vibrato to give it a little... effects were used on the original. I've just got a tiny amount of reverb and delay going. So you're just playing the G major triad arpeggio and adding the two, the A note there. So 12th fret, second string, 14th fret, third string, back to that B note, and then hit the arp the arpeggio, three, four, three, two, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, two, three, four, three, and then the... So take your pick which way you want to play it, but again, when that song comes on the radio for me, I'm waiting till the end just to hear that come in. It's very bell-like. I don't know if he was playing it on a Strat, but it has a really bell-like ringing tone. So there's one other lick in Boys of Summer that in my opinion is worth listening to the song on the radio when it comes on, even if you don't like the rest of the song. And if you hear Don Henley talk about this song, he keys in on the lyric that was the genesis of the song. And it was when he saw the deadhead sticker on the Cadillac on the, on the freeway, you know, in LA. And it sort of just, hit him that, you know, like basically the 60s are over. The idealism is gone if there's a deadhead sticker on a Cadillac. And it's more overdriven. Mike knows he's going to sing this lyric. He needs like kind of a savage little punctuation there leading into it. And so coming out of the instrumental break right before Henley says, out on the road today, I saw a deadhead sticker on the Cadillac. <laughs> Mike Campbell does something like that, playing First two strings open, third open, third, fifth, seventh open. And it just, boom, it just punctuates it and makes the song. 
Okay, moving to the strat for the whammy part on You Got Lucky, which is kind of an underrated, I think, Tom Petty song. Mike has this kind of spaghetti western um, motif in here that, again, works perfectly in the song and makes the tune. Uh, so the chord progression, if you were doing this, this kind of the synthesizer stabs, it would be... plays an A minor pentatonic run that goes like this. I've got a fair amount of tremolo on now. And he plays it with tremolo and a whammy bar. Uh, he originally played it on the three pickup Telecaster. He's got the red Telecaster with humbucker, humbucker single. I've seen him play it on his Duesenberg live. I've seen him play it on a Jazzmaster live. So you might be thinking, well, big deal. It's an A minor pentatonic lick. Anyone can do that. Well, no, not anyone can write a lick that becomes the motif for the whole song and fits so perfectly with the chord progression. When the when it starts off, it starts off on that E note because we're over the A minor. And then by the time it goes, gets to that D note, oh, that's when we're over the D minor. And then B note is, of course, part of your G chord. And of course, when, when it ends on that G note, we're over G chord. So, so seventh string, fifth string, fourth string, five, seven, back to seven on five, then five, three, five on the fifth string, then three, two, three, five, back. In the outro, he goes... <laughs> Further punctuation, right? So five to seven on the third string. Beautiful. And then when... when when it says go, just go. Single note punctuation, the A note at the 14th fret, third string. Why? Because it works. Why? Because it sounds perfect there. The other one from that song, he does. And again, that's over the. two strings, double stop, fifth fret, eighth fret, second string, seventh fret, third string, bend and then come back down. Yes, just an A minor pentatonic lick, but but it makes perfect sense in that environment, right? With Refugee, I'm going to try playing along uh, to the little intro solo, and that'll be the last one we look at. But that's the intro solo to Refugee, and again, very short, to the point, 
What's he doing? He's introducing the song. It's just a perfect introduction. It's making a statement. The chord progression is F sharp minor, A major, to E major. I saw somewhere once that on the recording they played the E major like this. I've watched a lot of live videos. It seems like they're doing a, a regular E major, but this would be an E5. Anyway, so F sharp minor. And what does he do? He does it on F sharp minor. Pentatonic. The only note that he brings in extra is that first fret of the third string. It's in the scale, it's just not in the pentatonic scale, but it is in the minor scale. It's the two, right? There's your one, two, minor, third. So he's basically walking up the F minor scale. the only semi-tricky part of it is at the end there's that Chuck Berry-ish lick which is bending the a quick bend on the fourth fret third string and then playing one two and one on the second fret and then sliding up to you guessed it the F sharp note on the seventh fret second string. It's kind of combining a Chuck Berry-ish thing, which we know Mike Campbell is very influenced by Chuck Berry. And the, that's just an old blues lick going from the same note on different strings, F sharp on the first string to F sharp on the second string. That's just a classic sort of old cliched lick, but it works, right? Okay, that was a lot, but I hope you enjoyed it. A real generous grab bag of Mike Campbell triad, arpeggio, and scale licks. It all makes sense. It's all simple to play, and it's brilliant writing. Check out the Blue Stingrays, and as always, thanks for joining me. See you next time.